I'm just moving through chapter six. Um, I had just finished a video on probability density functions in the 6163 notes. I'm on page 85 and a little bit like toward the middle of the page. Uh, the next topic is cumulative distribution functions. And again, we've already done these in chapter five and four. Um, CDF was the amount of area or probability up to a point. And now think about it, if we have a nice little f of x, let's say the area under the curve here, here's a density function. Okay, this is f of x. And um, the big property, we said the area under here has to be 1. And we said to find a probability between a and b, you integrate between a and b. But now what you want is maybe you want this capital F of x function. This is just the antiderivative. This just finds how much area up to x. So for example, let's let's say this is x right here. Capital F of x just denotes how much area there is on the curve up to x. So it shouldn't be surprising to you. Um, capital F is going to be continuous because as it goes along, right, it's just picking up more area. Um, it's always, we say non-decreasing because it can stay level, but as you go from left to right, you're always picking up either nothing or some probability. Um, so it's going to increase, 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 and I know, just think about this, by the time I get to this point, what does capital F of X have to be? If it's at the end of the support, then eventually when I get to the end, or if it's an infinite function, I'm going to pick up all my probability, which is 1, and if I go so far left, at some point, um, I'm going to narrow in on having no probability. So all this is saying, this is a function, as you move right, you pick up more probability, as you go left, you lose probability. Um, the probability being between two values, um, remember the language we were using back, oh, I want to say it's 4, 3, or 4, 4. Um, we can write the probability being between A and B as two CDFs, the difference. But again, I mean, this is so nice to me that if I, if I already have little f of x, I'm just going to integrate between A and B f of x dx. But I mean, by the, cent not the central limit theorem, uh, what is, oh. Of course, the fundamental theorem of calculus, that is just capital F of B minus F of A. And so the derivative of capital F is little f. Um, they have that relationship because it is its antiderivative. So again, capital F is just a function. It doesn't tell you probability between. It tells you probability up to a point x starting at the, at the base of the function or the lower support. So here's just a graph. Here was, here's an exponential um, distribution. This is F of x. And notice, let's say when we get to, when we get to about two, here's two right here. Notice um, we've picked up a lot of area, almost I'd say a half. If we over here to two and you look up here, um, this is how much area I've, I've accumulated, or the function f of x has accumulated up to two. And you see uh, this value is about I was wrong, right? So this is about 0.6, right? I mean, go all the way over here to eight. Look at look at how much probability, almost all of it. So if I go over here to uh, eight on this graph, you can see this is almost one. It's approaching one. So what I was saying is, if you have an infinite function, this is gradually, gradually, gradually going to approach one. So um, again, I, that's just a really nice. Uh, it's it. Sometimes I want to work with f of x, especially if somebody. I mean, capital F. Um, sometimes somebody will give it to you. Um, here again is the, the example I used in the previous uh, PDF section. And this is the probability about being between 0 and 9. So capital F, um, if this is 0 to 9, sorry, sorry, it's the puppy. She's like, no, no, I don't want to hear about this anymore. I'm, uh, I'm halfway thinking to stop. I don't know. Maybe she'll be like, oh, I'm not going to bark anymore. Um, capital F of X is the area under the curve up till X. So you can kind of see um, I'm integrating from 0 to X, and that's X over 9. Um, so, I mean, anywhere in here, right, the amount of area I pick up between 0 and 9, I, I know, like, if I said, uh, what is capital F of 8, that's the amount of area under the curve up until 8, which would be 8 ninths. So I already know this function tells me if I put in a value x, how much area is up to x. Not surprising if you put in here 9, right, f of 9 is 1. I mean, because you've picked up all the area. This is the part people don't usually get. So this makes sense. This is the antiderivative. 
anywhere up to x, how much area do you pick up up till you get to zero? So for x is below zero, as you move along this curve, you pick up no area, that's why it's zero. After you hit nine, how much area you pick up? Well, you're already at one. So to say something like um, capital F of 12, what's the probability the random variable will take on a value less than 12? It's one because you've already surpassed nine. You've already picked up all your probability. So these, most people don't like to write these in here, but that capital F of X is a continu continuous function. And to have it be legal, I have to consider what's happening below the lower support and above the upper support. And in this case, if you do have a support, you know above the upper is always one and below the lower is always zero and in, in between is your um, antiderivative. I would suggest also that you have to be very careful if you have a piecewise. And that's, that's one of the reasons I, I'm doing this video is, I mean, this makes perfect sense, but when you get to a piecewise that's a little bit more difficult, that's where people have trouble. Um, here, all I'm doing is I, I'm, I was showing you little f of x. So this example is nice. There's little f, there's capital F. You find some problems, okay. But this is really the one um, I really think is important. Um, this guy, the, listen, we don't have to worry about the story right now. I have a random variable that's piecewise defined basically over 0 to 2. And you can see the picture right now. It's, it's from 0 to 1, it, it's a linear function x, and from 1 to 2, it's a linear function, um, 2 minus x. It does, it's a triangle, it integrates the 1, everything's good. So when I build this guy, um, I'm going to have a, a piecewise capital F. So notice, um, I know right now, for any x less than 0, as I move along this curve, I have not picked up any area. So for x is less than 0, I have 0 probability. And now as I start going along this first curve, I can nicely see I've picked up 0, but the area under this curve is just going to be the antiderivative. So for x is between 0 and 1, I'm just going to say take any x in this interval and take its antiderivative. So basically, uh, all I'm saying is go to 0 to x, and this is the amount of area under the curve up till x. So if I told you I wanted the area under the curve up till a half, how much area is there, I would just take in a half and that function, and that would be an eighth, right? That's how much pr probability is up to a half. Um, here's the careful part. The next interval is the one people mess up. I just can't take an antiderivative here, because remember, after I got to point one, how much area have I picked up? I've already picked up, um, let's go ahead and stick one in here. Yeah, at one, you see, I already picked up area a half. So a lot of people just find the antiderivative of this, but you have to account for how much area you picked up in the previous piece or you're not being correct. So I was, I was a little afraid that when I talk about capital F being the antiderivative, you just, to construct it when you have a piecewise, you just can't go down the pieces and start taking antiderivatives. It's not going to work. Um, so I just have to set it up the same way I did number two. You can kind of see, so so imagine I have an x between 0 and 1, or 1 and 2. So for example, let's pick up this x. To find the area under the curve up to that x, I had to get all the area up to 1, and then I integrate from 1 to x over my new interval. So can you see that's exactly what I'm doing here? I'm integrating zero to from 0 to 1, because I crossed all that, and that has one function, u, and then from 1 to x, because that's the other function. And I'm using, um, this is terrible, I have a y in there, so there's a typo. Um, I'm, I'm doing this in u's just so I don't get confused. If I said x, if you were integrating x from you know 1 to x to minus x, it would get very bad. So I'm just doing a change of variable in here so I don't get myself confused. And if you watch this, it would be nice. You could tell me, remind me, I have a typo. This should be du. Otherwise, this is, doesn't make any sense at all. But um, So here you can see the outcome. For x is less than 0, I haven't picked up any area. Once I hit 2, I've picked up all the area. This one's easy. It is just the antiderivative because I haven't picked up any area up to it. But this one here incorporates, um, again, if you just thought you were going to do antiderivative, you wouldn't have gotten this function right here. So, And then once we get capital F, we do the same way we did in the last I think this homework set three you have right now, um, you still treat capital F the same, but I think it's even easier 
because you don't have to worry about, you know, for capital F now, if you have a function like that, you don't have to worry about coming from the left or coming from the right because you have a continuous function. So, um, and you have no probability at a point. So capital F is even easier in chapter six. Okay, so I'm going to make two more, one on mean of variance and one on the other most important theorem in probability called law of unconscious statistician. And I'm not making that up either. Okay, I'll talk to you soon.